So if you, what would be your, your, of all the players you've worked with, would you be able to pick a best, best 11 that you'd like to put out in the field? Is this something Gee, you've I thought we about? I thought we weren't going to do this one. I thought we weren't okay, going to do okay. this. Bit. Okay. But we'll uh, do it. I don't mind. We can do it. If, if you want, because uh, I, it can, um, I know it can be difficult and you know, different players from different, you know, different teams and eras, but uh, I'm sure it's something you, you've thought about um, or have an idea. So, so, yeah, we'll start. So, yeah, goalkeeper. Who's the best goalkeeper you think you've worked with? Um, probably Brian Colby when he was on the Foss course with us. But Brian, I think it would have been international, junior international. Or sorry, uh, an underage international, um, yeah. and would have played League of Ireland football. Brian again on his day was exceptional. The most injured player you'll ever come across in your life. Constantly, constantly yeah. injured. Yeah. But, but when you had him, and I remember one of the Ashley, when he signed for Ashley, one of the Ashley players turned and said, "Jesus Christ, where did you get him?" And because yeah. he was, he's that, he's that good. Again on his day, he's that good. Yeah. Um, uh, it's just the injuries, I suppose. Gary Neville, look, Gary was on the course with us. Gary Neville was on the course with us um, as well. You know, probably the best keeper in town at the moment. Um, yeah, but I think it's hard for anyone to... And for a number of, Gary, and for yeah, a number yeah. of years. Uh, yeah. I think, look, his, his, his mantelpiece, I presume, alone will tell the story of what he's achieved in the game. But um, Kala, I would put probably slightly ahead of him. Kala on his day, Kala was probably the one. Mm. Okay. Back, back four? I assume you're going to back four. Uh, yeah, back four, yeah. Um, um, AJ Connor, I suppose, right back. AJ and you well with Fairview now. Um, I think was called up to the most recent junior international squad as well, which is great okay, for him. Good, yeah. Tough, tough to argue kid. with AJ. Yeah, yeah ex- and you could put AJ around, anywhere. Yeah. You, could, you could probably put him in any position. Um, yeah. But AJ would stand out for me. Really yeah. exceptionally good player. Yeah, um, I thought with with the uh, the UL Collingwood teams, um, I definitely felt if you'd if you'd nine AJ O'Connor's, Garvin Coughlin, and a goalkeeper, you'd uh, you'd be in pretty good shape to win the, the yeah. Collingwood every year. I think he's just a great <laughs> he, great all round player. Could, you could probably stick AJ in goals even. He probably still really <laughs> um, The left back, and I've been thinking about this for a day or two, and. Again, there's been some really good left backs yeah, um, yeah. that we've had um, in on a number of teams. Um, probably Barry Hooten is the one that sticks out for me, and Jonathan Hannafin yeah. would be again was an excellent left back. But Barry played for me in U, in in UL and in Ashley and Yeah, and was 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 a huge part of that uh, squad. And most people remember Barry because he had a long throw, but Barry was one some, of the top. Some people remember him because of his funny name, like. Uh, mostly some people will remember him for his funny name but people remember him because of the long throw and yeah. but Barry, had, Barry was he was quick he was yeah. strong he had a frame he has a frame um, I think he was, I think Barry was a swimmer and I used to say that he, had a, he had a wingspan his shoulders were huge yeah. Um, yeah. He, you know, he, he's, the width of his shoulders were massive it's very tough to get around him he was, turned into a really good defender yeah. didn't venture over the halfway line maybe too much and that's for people like maybe Craig McMarlow, who for the year that we had him on the Foss course would have been would have been a really good left back. Um, uh, Barry probably shades it for me. Craig would be up there, but but um, but Barry probably shades it left back. Yeah. yeah. Center halves. Dermot, I suppose. Uh, me and Dermot go back a long time. Um, Dermot Fitzgerald, I think we we brought him. To Kilkenny, when his brother Desi was playing with Limerick in the 20s, he brought Dermot down to Kilkenny himself and Billy Barrett. Dermot would have been about 16 at the time and he played that day and he was really good. Yeah. Um, but he, he, he's played with some of the best clubs in town. Um, he's doing really well, albeit with slight injuries at Fairview at the moment. But again, when we had him on the course, he was, you know, he's, he's one you can hang your hat on. Scores goals, yeah. scores free kicks. Yeah. We, we have arguments about whether he goes around the wall or over the wall all the time. But um, <laughs> Dermot's one that you, when you have him, you know, you, you know you can hang your hat on him and you can rely on him. Yeah. Um, if he wasn't a redhead, you know, he'd probably playing League of Ireland football. Look. Yeah, yeah. Can't, uh, can't disagree with that, yeah. Yeah. 
The other centre back, it's, it's difficult. Um, Paul Danaher played in that Limerick 21s team that I had or that I was involved in um, and went on to play with Limerick, went on to play with that loan. Um, and again, a real leader. Yeah. Um, um, then you've got people like Wobbler or Damien Collins with, with Ashton who played in his 40s, played Premier Football in his 40s. Really impressive. It was team of the year at one stage. Was I think it was two years in a row was Ashton's junior A player of the year. Um, really impressive. Um, Shane Harrington, um, brilliant with UL. Andy Cowper, excellent. Andy, again, I think gave us his best performances. I know he's been a mainstay with regional for a long time, but Andy probably gave us Gave us, he, he, he was a superstar. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. For, yeah. for um, UL. Yeah, I don't want to a bad UL like, game, yeah. No, no, and that's the thing. And, and he was always there. Might have trained all the time, but he was always there. And again, he would chip in with a couple of goals. But Dan always probably the one. Paul Dan or probably the one that, uh, that impressed me most over the years. Tried to sign him a couple of years later um, for Ashling when he was out of favour with Fairview. Mm. Um but he was, he was he said he wanted to play for Fairview and, and that was fine. But um uh, a brilliant kid, a great great character, great personality about him, uh, a real leader and and someone that you you'd really want to have on your team. Mm. Okay. Uh midfield? Well, I'm going with a diamond, right? Okay. Because <laughs> because anyone who's played for me generally will understand that. I like to play with a midfield diamond. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I like it for loads of reasons, but, it, but the reason that I want to go with the diamond today is because uh, there's been a lot of really good midfield players as well that I've, that I've worked with and some lads who've played really well in the diamond as well. But um, um, Stephen Goggin would be the whole midfielder and Gogsy, um probably a bit like Marmite with a lot of people, but I've always had a really good time for him. He's never let me down. Yeah. in terms of his application and, and again it's one of those things where I remember the first conversation I had with him which was nothing about football it was about something completely different um, and I remember the conversation I had to ask him to come back to sign for Ashley and Cody um, and I remember the conversations we had after we had the just a little bit of success that we had and and Gogsy would be one that I think you could put in a team like that that you know, yeah. would would do a lot of your you do a lot of what I wanted for me on the pitch, um, and and a great guy. So yeah. I I put Gogsy in there. The two the two midfield central midfield positions in the diamond, and James McGrath would be the left sided one. I think left of the diamond, and uh, James with a captain Ireland under fifteens. Um, Nina boy play with Nina play with Pike Rovers, um, play with Limerick. Um, I think he's with Salt Hill Devon now. I'm not sure he's up in Galway. Yeah. Um, but James would be, again, one of the more talented, one of the most talented players that I've, that I've dealt with. With a real mean streak. Um, yeah. And with bark orders at people, I think himself and Gogsy would end up thumping the head off one another. But, um, but two, two exceptionally good players. And, and, and James would be, would be the left of that diamond. To the right side of the diamond, I would have put Brian Butler in, but Brian hates the diamond. Absolutely <laughs> hates hates the diamond, um, but we had a Brazilian kid. I'd love to put Brian in there, but he wouldn't want to play there. So we had a Brazilian guy called Gustavo Santos, who played for you. Enough said. For, enough said. No need to justify. Played, Gustavo played Santos for Ashling, played for Ashling um, for a, for a number of, for for maybe two years, and the toughest player you would come across. Enjoy played the right side of the diamond. Enjoy playing there because he was. He was a kid that loved to tackle, loved to work, loved yeah. to get on the ball, loved to play. And we played regional and it might have been a cup match and came off afterwards and Declan Cusack, one of the twins that played for regions, asked, who the fuck is he? He's been kicking me for the last, <laughs> so whatever time Declan come onto the pitch, he's been just kicking him. And Gustavo loved that bit and I really loved that part of his character and, and that's the type of team that I would have wanted to, um, to have on the pitch would be lads who who would have that rootless edge and would do whatever it takes to win the game, trying yeah. to be creative, trying to play good football, trying to do everything right, but having that, that little bit of rootless, rootlessness. Um, and the 10 would have to be Jimka. And mm. you've got Jimka in there as a number 10. Um, 
as lazy as he can be on the pitch, he's just as magical. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think that formation suits him as well. I think it plays to Chimka's strength. Yeah. Yeah, and he played a little bit deeper as um, as, <laughs> as his Ashton career uh, wore on. But Chimka was was again a, a top player, a brilliant fella. Um, still talk to him, and he captained that two-week up with the team. But Chimka on his day was unstoppable. You you couldn't get near him. Uh, yeah. You couldn't get near him. And I think as a number ten, I think he was uh, he was ahead of a lot of people on the pitch. He was ahead of a lot of. Um, he was ahead of. He was thinking ahead of everybody else. Yeah, which was on different level on his day, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So two strikers, yeah. Strikers. Two strikers, um, two strikers, yeah. We spoken about Garvin already. Garvin be one. I think Garvin plays really well on his own up front. Yeah. Um, with a strike partner, It'd be interesting to see. I, I don't think we've ever played him with a strike partner. Are definitely none of the teams that I've been involved in played with him. With a, played him with the strike partner. But Garvin would be one um, who would score a goal from anywhere. Um, yeah. Worked hard, played at all levels of the game, playing in, uh, in, in New Zealand at the moment. And uh, again, like you said a while ago, when you have Garvin in your team, you can, um, when you have Garvin in your team, you have a chance. Sure. Yeah, it's as simple as that. You just, uh, yeah, he can, uh, it gives you the luxury of, you know, you can play whatever way you want and, you know, hopefully nick a goal. <laughs> he's he's yeah. that good. That's your know, one one opportunity can uh, can can be all that he needs. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other striker, the other striking role. <sighs> this is interesting now. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think. Um, ben Savage was a really good centre mm-hmm. forward for us with UL. I don't want to pick too many UL players, but I want to still pick the best yeah. players that I played with or that I that I've worked with. Um, Shane Clark played on that 2007 21s team. Yeah, is an 18 year old, I think, possibly even younger. Um, again, really impressive, scored a lot of goals. Yeah, Shane uh, Clark and, and Garvin up top would surely, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. would we, we'll definitely score. Um, it's a long time ago, and obviously, Shane's, Shane's kicked on massively. Um, he scores, is, is, I don't know how many goals in his career, and again, he's played a lot of, a lot of football, a lot of different levels. Um, but I don't think I worked with him. I get Jesus I mean, at that time. My coach in life, I probably wasn't working with players as such. It was just mm. putting on training sessions. Um, but after that, one that always stuck out to me that was really good when he was with us on the fast course. Um, and I'm definitely going to forget somebody, and I can't think who it's <laughs> going to be. But but uh, but David Hannon, David Hannon. Um, was with was he with Fairview at the time? I'm not sure. I think he was. Did he go to Pike or whatever? Davy would have been an incredible underage player with yeah. with Harberstown, um, and and really kicked on. He reminded me of Wayne Rooney. He had he had this burst of speed. He had power. He could score goals, um, and it's hard. You know, it's hard to go and say would he work well with Garvin. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he would. I don't think he would. Definitely wouldn't now. But I, I, um, I think probably Ben Savage is probably the one. I think Ben was Ooh, was in UL for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. and him, him and Garvin. I think you've got Ben was a huge. Uh, obviously, he's a tall man, strong boy. He scored goals, good in the air, good on the ground. Yeah, and with a player like Garvin playing off him, I think yeah, they'd be they'd be really good. But just purely from the players that we've had on the Foss course, um, lads that we've had in Anacotti as we've had new well even players from uh, from Granville or some of the underage teams and that yeah I think I think Ben would be up there with one of my favourite with some of my favourite players he was um, mm. he's, and he's still playing I believe in, in Texas um, but uh, a brilliant kid really yeah. ambitious and again it would never leave you down never let you down yeah so. yeah good yeah so okay so sorry if I let anybody out <laughs> so yeah so final final 11 of Brian Collipy in goals, Barry Hooten left back, AJ O'Connor right back, Dermot Fitz and Paul Danaher, the centre of defence. Uh, Gogsy, Gogsy is your, your holding midfielder. James McGrath and Gustavo, uh, Santos. Gustavo, Gustavo Santos <laughs> on the either side. Chimke in the 10, Garvin and Ben Savage up top. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. strong, strong 11. Mm. Mm. Um, I left out people like 
there's other people like James Walsh, who's, who's, you know, who's so important to any team, versatile centre back, spent all his time at one club. Um, brilliant. Um, again, Dan Lucy, probably a bit too soft for this team. Um, <laughs> but Dan, again, would always give you what he had. Uh, and James Cusson, um, again, a really good, inventive player, Newcastle West boy, was on the first course, went to Fairview. Um, again, really impressive players, uh, great fellas to have around. Um, and even someone like Evan Comerford in goals, you know, I think you have a bit of a, you have a yeah. bit of crack in the subs bench anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Um, so we'll just, yeah, we'll change gears a small bit. And uh, I know you're, you're a recently qualified sports psychologist. Um, so so what, what, what motivated you to, to do the sports psychology course or to move into that area 